quality improvement and increased efficiency measures play a role in your financial planning? Does quality play a role equal to that of finance within board meetings? How do your organization's quality improvement strategies impact your financial performance? We have to think of quality on several levels. First is the moral and ethical level. It's the right thing to do for patients. Uh, it's a commitment we make to them when they come to our organization uh, needing care. That we'll give them the right care in a safe environment. On another level, quality drives a sense of pride and professionalism within an organization. It is the foundation of a, of a healthy culture for the organization. And thirdly, it drives financial performance. We know that improved quality drives improved financial performance. And when you have all three of those levels working together, you have a very strong culture, strong uh, a commitment, uh, and strong operations. In the past, our boards were largely structured around finance and performance against targets that were financial in nature. And in, in going forward in the future, we will be compensated for the outcomes that we're capable of delivering. Therefore, some boards with which I've worked are moving more towards combining the quality and finance committees of the board into one thing because we cannot control the finance if we cannot control the quality and vice versa. We cannot control the quality if we don't have access to means to support the quality. Going forward, I think it's going to be really important for the boards and the CEO and the hospital staff to focus on not only driving the cost down, but quality as well. That's what's going to make us sustainable going forward. The board needs to ask the hard questions looking at the metrics, if they see trends, they need to ask us why. And it's not okay to say, oh, well, we're just going to do more education. We need to be doing that. It needs to be a main focus or we won't be around. So you got to drive your costs down, but it goes hand in hand with making sure you keep improving and raising your quality. One area that's changing significantly for hospitals is how they are paid for what they do. Uh, the old fee-for-service system where if you did more, you got paid more is on its way out. What is on the way in is a, a fixed amount of money. Um, and it can be per episode for a patient, or it can be um, uh, per procedure, or it can be per person per month. But nonetheless, the movement is definitely toward some fixed level of payment. So as we go forward, the linkage between quality, satisfaction, payment, is tight and quality becomes your best friend in a fixed payment environment. Now we're also finding that it connects to the finances of the organization, that better quality improves finances. So it's not as though it's separate from finance or some other function, but we have to lead with quality and quality improvement and all of the things built around that. There's really a very strong business case for quality now. Uh, when I first came into the field, uh, people weren't sure. As a matter of fact, they were pretty sure that uh, improvements in quality would cost more money. Uh, uh, that's not the case. Uh, all of the national studies are showing that as you improve patient care and performance, costs actually go down. We have to get better for the sake of our patients, but it also gives us better overall organizational performance. And we're starting to be paid for performance. So our payments will be linked to how well we do on key performance indicators. And so now there's a direct tie like never before. Today there is a, a national focus on certain key areas. Uh, number one, uh, hospital associated conditions. So infections, wrong site surgeries, things like that. Definite priority, definitely things that we've got to try to reduce to zero if at all possible. Uh, secondly, readmissions, uh, preventable readmissions, uh, making sure that people have the instructions, know what they need to do when they go home, that we provide the support so that they don't have to come back in for the same reason. We're not going to get paid for that readmission. So you're starting to see a, a real uh, gelling of uh, attention and focus at the national level around certain key activities, 
certain key indicators of quality and safety. Since boards allocate the resources within the organization and provide investment capital in new equipment and new services, boards should also look at improving quality as an investment opportunity. Boards should assure that enough money is placed in the budgets of the quality and safety programs to assure their success, that there's adequate staffing and resources to build effective quality and safety programs. The collection and use of data is essential to a quality improvement effort. Uh, the old saying is, what gets measured gets done. So if the organization knows that there are key indicators that will indicate how well the organization is performing in specific areas and then as part of a broader picture, its overall performance, uh, attention gets paid to that. Uh, and so you have to have data to know if you're progressing because the fundamental question of how we're doing gets answered with another question, compared to what? Compared to what our targets are for improvement in given areas. So data, a measurement, reporting, a trending over time, key functions. Organizations today use a balanced scorecard to measure overall progress and success. Those scorecards contain some quality measures, financial measures, community and, uh, and patient satisfaction measures, maybe some market share measures. Off of that scorecard is driven indicators and incentives for leadership. CEO annual performance objectives link straight to that scorecard. Clinical leaders maybe link directly to more the quality and safety indicators than maybe the market share indicators, but their incentives and, and uh, objectives run right off of that same scorecard. So you're starting to see an overall connection across the organization from organizational targets and goals to individual performance expectations and incentives. Boards must understand how value-based payment, readmission penalties, and hospital-acquired condition penalties can significantly impact your organization's financial performance. Appropriate resources must be allocated for data collection and to support and implement quality improvement initiatives. Boards must have a clear, understood approach to monitor quality that includes a dashboard for monitoring overall performance. 